Good morning. It's Tuesday of Holy Week, April 7th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Message of the Cross, and our scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish, since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Dr. Luther Dorr, my preaching professor in seminary, often said that preaching is foolish enough. It's the preacher's goal to not make it any more foolish than God intended. Perhaps Dr. Dorr hoped to save us from making the mistake of taking the power of salvation out of the preaching event. Either way, there's something powerful about the message of the gospel, whether presented with words or deed. The late comedian George Burns is quoted as saying, The secret of a good sermon is having a good beginning and a good ending, and having them as close together as possible. Now, there may be some wisdom from the irreverent Mr. Burns, but a quick check of John Wesley's sermons from the late 18th century reveals that he wrote approximately 5,500 words in a sermon. Typically, those sermons took a good bit more than an hour to preach. Today's attention-deprived minds prefer shorter, much shorter. My average sermon is about four type pages or 1,500 words, less than one-third of Wesley's. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes for me to preach mine. Even this is longish by some modern standards. And that depends on whom you ask. Ask a wise know-it-all who sits cross-armed scowling through a sermon because he knows he's going to miss the kickoff if the sermon goes 10 minutes over the hour or a humanist-bent, revival-hating scholar, and they'll gladly tell you most sermons are hot air. On the other hand, if you ask a hot-for-God Christian if the sermon was long today, he or she will tell you, how can a sermon be too long if it's holding up the message of God's saving, soul-refreshing grace to a thirsty part soul? Now, Considering it's just the tip of the iceberg of importance that the cross message brings to humanity, if the foolish, powerful, very long messages of the 18th century propelled the Wesleyan movement in America, spreading scriptural holiness across the land like a grass fire, what is the scriptural ADD 10-minute sermonette doing to our culture? For you today... If you're a believer, it's not a matter of the length of a sermon, but rather the depth it will reach to honor God's gift. That depth reaches down into the darkest realm of the human heart. That's not a long sermon. It's the antidote for a long eternity without Christ. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.